What is going on YouTube? His name is Rogue by the way. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Red's Exotic and this is Rogue, my new exotic pet in my channel. Welcome to Red's Exotic where I do exotic pet feeding, tutorials, guides, and whoops. Sorry if I'm scaring you. Vlogs. Just gonna put him down. So today we're gonna be doing a bioactive video on how to set up a bioactive enclosure. In this video, I'll explain you guys what you guys need for setting up a bioactive enclosure. And mainly I'm gonna do this for my Therophosa apophysis, which is a tarantula that has a high humidity requirement. For anybody that didn't know, a bioactive enclosure is for setting up a high humidity for a specific animal inside that enclosure. Let's start this uh, video. Alright, first thing you're gonna need is basically an LED grow light. So, this basically, this type of lamp basically promotes like plant growth. It mimics the light of the sun. And over time, it's gonna produce a little bit of heat that you're gonna need for the humidity of your pet. And you're gonna need this LED light that goes into an LED dome. In which I'll explain in, the, in a bit. This is one of those LED lights that you're gonna need in a bioactive enclosure. And most of the time, you can find like... LED LED lights in like Home Depot or like pet shop most of them will have this and they're gonna carry it in their stores you know for sale so yeah that's one of those things that you're gonna need for a bioactive enclosure and then next one up is a nano dome this is basically for your LED light in which you're trying to imitate the Sun kind of gives off the heat because it's kind of condensating the heat into one spot and kind of heats up the enclosure and then you just basically place your nano LED bulb right there and then you just place this on top of your closure and the way I like it this one has a place to like you can hang so it's kind of convenient too so yeah like a dome lamp fixture this is gonna be one of the ways we're gonna set it up so yeah and then huge shout out to um, Marshall Arachnids I'm gonna link up the tags up somewhere in there in the video but he gave me a like a free substrate on for bioactive substrate which is pretty cool kind of excited to try it out and i'm kind of excited in setting up this bioactive enclosure using this substrate but in differences you can make your own substrate usually what i do is i if i didn't have like a bioactive substrate i'd use a eco -art right there and then mix it up with some leaf litter and then some vermiculite soil substrate and then add some sphagnum moss right there and then I'd add like a little bit of charcoal right there and some small cork bark pieces right there like small driftwood pieces so yeah that's what I'd use if I want to make my own bioactive substrate and then next one up is mesh mesh this is what you'd use to like separate the substrate and the middle of the substrate to the very bottom of the, the drainage layer on the very bottom that's what you'd separate both of them so so yeah you have to like cut it and fit it in the enclosure to make it perfectly seam and perfect and then we have rocks or you know pebbles or any types of sort of that so you're gonna place this on the very bottom of the mesh it's gonna act as like a drainage layer when you spray down spray it down with water it kind of condensates and makes it like a bit more humid in the enclosure so yeah like you can use like any type of rock or pebble from what i found on the internet this type of rock is for like i bought it at a home depot it's called red lava it's like a red lava rock i don't know that's like a common thing but yeah and last but not least this is a 8x8 it's an exoterra small enclosure this is what i used to use for my my pac-man frog and basically the way we're gonna do this oh i ignored this because i bought the wrong mesh and i was thinking it was like the perfect one but I bought the wrong brand. So when buying mesh, you have to be really careful. You can see like there's lots of spaces here to where the substrate can go down the drainage. And then this is the mesh that I bought. You can see it's like very fine tuned and there's not much like like big holes and everything over there. So the substrate can't just like fall down the drainage layer. Anyways, so the way we're gonna do this, the rocks will be on the bottom and then the mesh will be here on top of it. And then we put the substrate on top of those. So yeah. Let's get this uh let's get this process down. Oh, I almost forgot. Um yeah, plant. You got to choose your plant wisely because like too much sunlight sometimes can kill them. So, I pick like the perfect one that like is very resilient to basically everything. Doesn't need that much watering or you know doesn't need much sunlight so i have here is a photos plant wait my bad pothos it's a pothos plant i don't know why i said photos but it's a pothos plant and 
yeah, just keeps growing and we're gonna plant this inside the enclosure. All right, I eyeballed the mesh as much as possible to try and like fit here. I gave it a little bit of room and leeway. So when I put down the rocks, I'm gonna like bend it over so it has, it's completely seamless. So anyways, let's start putting in the rocks for the enclosure. Let's place it down there. Grab more rocks. There you go, that looks good. And this is what I'm talking about. So you place down the mesh. I'm honestly doing a terrible job right now. Also another reason why you put like mesh is because so the tarantula can't get down to bury down to the rocks and you know so like it doesn't collapse on it if ever the rocks are like like on top of the tarantula and everything anyways we're gonna try the mega mix from Marshall arachnids another huge shout out to him because I use this for my isopods and I forgot to mention it earlier in the video and my isopods are just like no joke just blooming so for people wondering what he has like I see chunks of like charcoal, you know, like a little bit of twigs in here and there. Some leaf litter, which is pretty cool. All that nourishment you're going to need for when you're setting up this bioactive. Then getting it all flat. Alright, we'll add a little bit of more. Now we got this uh, enclosure done. Yep. That's what I'm seeing right now. It's pretty nice layering. Like, no joke, I feel like an artist right now, so... Alright. So... Wow, that looks beautiful. Okay, I guess he won't be picky with that anyways. And then let me water it down. Wow, this feels like an art. Then we have my pothos plant. I'm gonna put him in the corner. I'll place the pothos plant in that corner over there. I like this leaf litters in this mix. It's pretty good. It just adds like a weird color and variation to the enclosure. All right, next one up is my dwarf white isopods. So yeah, right there in the corners. So I got a ton of those cleanup crews right there. Look, we found one. Right there. So yeah, this is gonna be the cleanup crew. There's our cleanup crew. I got some couple of springtails. And I basically bred most of them, so I'm confident there's no parasites or anything like that that will harm my tarantula. So yeah, this, like I'm not gonna lie, this looks beautiful. Like, wow. I just love this substrate mix. It just looks beautiful. I'm actually happy. <laughs> this actually looks good. All right, enough with the suspense. Let's uh, move my Therophosa apophysis in here. So probably I'm hoping he can, he or she will get inside there in that burrow. All right, um, basically holding the camera right now. Sorry, 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 but you're getting a bigger enclosure. Please move. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. See, it's bioactive, girl. It's like amazing. All right, there you go. And now, oh, let's move this flower right here. See, it just adds accent to it. I ain't gonna lie, that actually looks beautiful. All right, let's move this water dish. That looks amazing. Not gonna lie, I might cry because it looks amazing. And then we're gonna place it right here. And then we have the dome light. I got the cords fixed up. Hopefully this will look amazing. That actually looks beautiful. I mean, you guys can't see the therapoza, but it's like right inside there. And then the drainage layer, the mesh, the substrate. And then we have, we got the plant over there. Got some springtails, isopods inside there. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Anyways, um, just a couple more tips. Um, you have to be very specific with like isopods, like the species of isopods that you place in your bioactive enclosure. Some species of isopods, like dairy cow isopods that I usually keep, I would never place in a bioactive enclosure with my tarantulas. Because reason number one, they're very carnivorous species of isopods. They tend to, they tend to perform more protein than, you know, your regular decomposing stuff with, like, regular isopods. 
So the only isopod that I'd recommend placing in a bioactive enclosure is dwarf white isopods, which that I produce myself most of the time because like they tend to just leave alone the tarantula and more man maintainable because most of the time tarantulas won't even notice that they're there. So yeah, um, even with springtails too, like springtails are basically the staple of cleanup crew in a bioactive enclosure or like in any humidity type of uh, enclosure that you might have. They basically clean up molds or anything that's super decaying that can create like fungus or that could harm your tarantula in a way. So they're basically a go in bioactive enclosures. Another thing would be, as I said earlier in the video, you have to be very specific with the lighting and which type of light bulb you're gonna use in the bioactive enclosure because some lights can't provide that type of that you're trying to mimic as like a sun to where and can do the process of photosynthesis in which they produce their own food so yeah that's basically it as always thank you guys for watching my channel if you guys like this video and you you learned a thing or two from it hit that thumbs up and don't forget to comment down below and I'll engage with you guys on the comment section. So yeah, let's queue up this outro.